Safe mode is usually a good place to start when you're troubleshooting because you've got a few options on how you can start Windows in a mode that doesn't load everything that Windows might need to get running, but just only certain aspects of the operating system. That way, if part of your problem is occurring when one of those more advanced features is starting up, at least you can get into Windows with safe mode and perhaps make a few changes. There's more than one safe mode, though. There's a couple of different modes. The, the safe mode in general is going to be only necessary drivers, but you can break it down from there. There's a safe mode with network which loads not only the operating system, but just enough to get yourself connected over the network. And if you're in an environment where you need to pull files from another location, or you need to get the network running, even though other parts of the operating system are not running, this may be the right safe mode to use. There's also a safe mode with the command prompt. Now, you don't have the Windows Explorer in this case. This is a very, very simplified version of Windows. Very quick, very dirty, but it allows you to get Windows running and get to a command prompt so that you can make changes to the operating system. Another interesting option in safe mode is to enable a VGA mode. And if you've installed a bad driver or you've got a driver that has become corrupt and it's not launching properly and you can't see what's happening on the screen, you can tell Windows, let's use a very, very basic fundamental graphics mode that practically every device in the world would be able to display on the monitor, and that's this VGA mode. So you've got a number of options to work with whenever you're working through the safe mode. Let's launch this safe mode configuration and see what it looks like. This is the BIOS setting that we were looking at earlier. What I'm going to do is hit the Escape key to exit, and then I'm going to be ready with my F8 key. So we'll hit Escape. I'll go to exit. I'm going to exit, discarding any changes. And this says that really exit now? Yes, exit setup. And then I'm going to push my F8 key until I get the Windows Advanced Options menu. I was fast enough. I was able to catch it. And look at all these options. These are the ones we were just looking at, the safe mode, safe mode with networking, and safe mode with command prompt. Let's try one of these. Let's do the safe mode with command prompt so we can see what that's like. And if I hit Enter, it says, well, we're going to start Windows XP Professional. That's the operating system I have on this machine. Uh, and we're going to use the safe mode with the command prompt. That's the one, and I'm going to hit Enter. We get a lot of debug information popping up on the screen. This is something that automatically happens when you're in safe mode that normally is not shown in a normal boot. This is all happening behind the scenes on a normal boot. We just don't see it. Occasionally, if a message pops up, we're then able to catch what's going on and see what's happening with that. Here's the safe mode. Windows is starting up. And it says across the top that this is the safe mode. It gives you the build of Windows that you happen to be using. I have a password for this particular build of Windows. And we'll type that in and hit Enter. And now here I am in my Windows safe mode with command.exe. That's it. If I minimize this, let's move over and hit the Minimize button. Yep, that's it. That's all I get. I don't get a regular desktop, which means that if you were in a situation where there was something on the desktop or in the operating system desktop areas or, or graphical views that was creating the problem, this would allow you to go in and now modify the operating system. It's exactly the same operating system that you would ever have. It's just now that I, I just don't have a graphical front end. You do have to be very, very knowledgeable at how to use the command line here, which is why in the 702 series, there is extensive work on knowing what to do at the command line and knowing what to type in so that you can modify files, move files around, or recover different aspects of the operating system. Working with an operating system can be a little bit hairy sometimes when you're installing things like new hardware drivers. You may find that you start your computer up, your Windows operating system begins to load those drivers, and then something goes wrong and the entire system refuses to boot. In those particular configurations and those situations, you can use this mode, last known good configuration. And that can really help you out. So you really do always have to think about having a plan B. This won't help you all the time. You still want to have a backup and have a secondary options available in case you do need to restore the OS. But in those cases where something has just gone wrong with your config, you can have Windows revert back to the last time we were able to log in and not have a problem. This What this does is keep the last configuration. When you're able to log in properly and have the operating system start up, it remembers that and it stores it off. So you may want to wait. If you've just installed some new hardware, you may want to wait a moment until every driver loads up in your computer 
before then logging in because you don't want to overwrite what Windows thinks was a good configuration. So this is something that comes in really handy when you start working with it. But keep in mind, it only goes so far. It only works with the configuration of your workstation, of your operating system, it has nothing to do with application configuration. So if you installed a new application or you changed something in some documents that you had, this last known configuration is not going to back those up. It's not going to revert back to a previous application configuration. This is only for the Windows operating system config. Even if you plan for everything to go well, occasionally with a computer, you do have problems. And in different operating systems, you have different things that you can do prior to the operating system booting to help restore some of those. But for those to really work well, we're going to need to do some work before we have a problem. In Windows 2000, there's something called an emergency repair disk. Windows XP Professional has a similar capability called automated system recovery. For Windows Vista, however, there is more of an integrated Windows backup and restore process. But regardless of which one of these that you use, you need to think about how you can begin to implement these. In fact, for most people, you'll want to always have an updated emergency repair disk or automated system recovery ASR disk or a set of backups and something we can restore from. If we run into any problems, we're going to need to repair our system. You should always, always have a complete backup. It really doesn't matter which one of these operating systems you're using. The ERD, the emergency repair disk, and the ASD, the automated system recovery, do not back up your data. So you're going to need to make sure that you are either using the built-in backup functions of the operating system or some third-party backup functionality to be able to make sure that all of your applications and all of your documents are safe. To create this ASR disk in Windows XP, we can go to our Start menu under All Programs, Accessories, System Tools will be an option for Backup. This backup starts up in this wizard mode. If you want to create one of the repair disks, so you need to click this option called Advanced Mode. That gives you a lot more options available to you. And you'll notice right here on the front page is an option to create an automated system recovery wizard where you can create a two-part backup of your system, a floppy disk that has your system settings, and other media that contains a backup of your local system partition. This is the one that you'll want to choose if you want to have something available that you'll be able to recover from during the boot process of Windows XP. Let's boot up with Windows XP, and let's see what it takes to be able to recover with an ASR disk. To use your system recovery tools in Windows XP, you're going to need the original XP media. So in my virtual machine, I have virtually slid in the CD that has Windows XP on it. And when it says, press a key to boot from this CD, I do that. And if you watch carefully near the bottom of this screen down here, it says press F2 to run automated system recovery. And this says, please insert the disk labeled Windows Automated System Recovery Disk into the floppy drive. Press any key when ready. So you would take the disk that was created during that backup process previously, and that's what would be used to re-import all of those settings and recover your system back to a, a state that you can hopefully be able to use when it boots back up. In Windows Vista, we would back up our files using the built-in Windows Vista backup program under All Programs, Maintenance, and there is a Backup and Restore Center. And this prompts you to back up files or your entire computer or restore files or your entire computer. You've also got options in here to repair Windows using a system restore or to create a restore point or change the settings that are in here. If you want to back up your computer, you click a button. Windows Backup will ask your permission to continue, at which time it will present you with options you have available for backing up. My computer doesn't have any backup facilities available. But once you get past this point, you can then say, use your external hard drive. Use a separate DVD-ROM that you might have, read-write that you might have. And then it can back up your system onto that media. That can then be used later. We'll boot from the Windows Vista DVD, and we'll use the built-in capabilities there to restore that backup.